Hey everybody, it's Julie again, and today I'm giving you some writing advice. Today's topic is going to be about speech tags. If you don't know what a speech tag is, it's the part of the dialogue that authors write that will say said or asked. Um, many people are encouraged sometimes by people who don't know what they're talking about to use very creative speech tags like instead of saying that someone said something, they'll be told that they should say something like expectorated or uh, groused, something creative like that. And my perspective on that is that it is a terrible idea. I've gotten quite a lot of pushback over the years. I've given some pretty good writing advice uh, in my time, and this is something that I always seem to end up getting shouted down about from amateur authors who uh, they, they're they're absolutely convinced that this is a fantastic way to make their writing more varied, more interesting. And I don't know who keeps telling young authors that this is a good idea. I don't know if English teachers are reinforcing this idea that that's the part of your sentences that you should be focusing on trying to make varied and interesting. But it is a very bad idea to use tons of creative permutations for the word said. And um, I'm going to go into five reasons why I think that that is not a good idea and that you should get out of the habit of using creative permutations for the word said as soon as you can. So reason number one why you should not do this is that when you do, you're decorating the part of the sentence that should stay as invisible as possible. When you're decorating the said words, you are putting in your narrative voice and unless the narrator or the storyteller is supposed to be a character, we should really hear from you as little as possible. We should be letting the character's dialogue set the tone and set the mood. And so when you're throwing in these attention-getting words, trying to make things interesting, you're, you're missing the point of which part of that sentence should have the focus. You need to try to get out of the way and stay as invisible as possible. So when you're making those words very colorful and very flavorful, uh, you're you're distracting us from what we're supposed to be paying attention to. So you, ordinarily, they're pretty un, that's pretty unnecessary. When you have something like an apology and the person says, I'm sorry, you don't need to say apologized so-and-so because we already can tell that the person said, I'm sorry. Therefore, it's an apology. It's unneeded. And we need your voice to be in that sentence as little as possible. Number two. Your characters' ways of speaking should be distinct enough from each other that you actually don't need speech tags that often. There are, of course, exceptions to this because sometimes you do have to tell us who's talking straight out, tell us who is using the microphone right now. But uh, ordinarily, in real life, you can generally tell who's talking even if you don't have the extra cues of, say, their the pitch of their voice, the tone of their voice, the flavor of it, the accent. Um, so you should try to pull from conversations that you've heard in real life, trying to figure out, okay, how is it that I can tell these people apart when they're speaking, and try to filter that into your writing. Some people will develop an over-reliance on, say, a catchphrase or an accent, and I recommend not depending entirely on those things, even if they're an authentic part of the character and they're in there. Uh, you can look at, say, a chat conversation between two or more people, any two or more people, and you can see um, aspects of the way that, of the choices that they make in their sentence structure and their word choice uh, that helps you figure out who's talking. Maybe they speak more academically. Maybe they tend to throw uh, a lot more like and um into the way that they speak. Uh, the the way that different people speak can tell you a lot, and readers will pick up on it. You don't have to lead them around by the hand and emphasize who's speaking all the time. So you may actually need fewer speech tags than you think you do in the first place. Number three, we should generally be able to tell how the dialogue is being said based on what is being said. If your dialogue is written well, we, sh we should be able to hear it, and we shouldn't have to wait until we get to the end of what is being said to be told how it's said. We're going to pick up on that if it's well written. So chances are, if 
you think that we need your little street signs all along the way to explain what we're seeing, then what you really need to do is pull back and try to make your characters more filled out and make it, paint your scene more effectively so that we can understand the context without having you standing there telling us how everything is said. If we understand your characters and we're really invested in the way that the scene is coming together, we're going to be able to feel that mood and we're going to be able to understand how everything is being said without adverbs, without so-and-so said angrily. Um, so that's another reason why you, should, you shouldn't you should depend on what comes after the dialogue for us to understand how what is being said is being said. Number four, when you use a lot of big words, a lot of unusual words to replace very simple words, what you end up doing is you end up looking like you're trying to show off, that you're trying to impress people with your vocabulary. And the message that that sends to publishing industry professionals is that it's an early warning sign that you're probably an amateur and you don't want to set them off thinking in that direction about you. So it's best to pull away from trying to trying to use these uh, fancied up versions of the word said when just said or no speech tag will do. And number five, on the rare occasion that those words are appropriate, if you overuse them, you're going to pull away from the, the power and the impact that those words have when you really do need to use them. So every once in a while, it is going to make a splash to use a, a very specific and a very powerful word to tag your speech. And we're just, we're going to get seasick if we see it all the time. So you're, you're limiting the power that your words can have if you're always focused on trying to punch every time somebody speaks. So you might say at this point, Julie, like, when can I use speech tags other than said and asked? Isn't that incredibly boring? Well, what I would say is that you should, you should only tag your, your speech with something other than said or asked if, say, the volume might not be a, a completely apparent by what is being said. You may, you may want to tag it with whispered or shouted or yelled. That's fine. Um, also, maybe tone, such as he said sarcastically. Maybe you can't tell from context that the person is being sarcastic and you may tag it with that. But uh, other than that, it's, it's very rare that you're going you're gonna to want to distract us with something other than said or asked or something that gets out of its own way. Because sentences are not Christmas trees. They don't need to be decorated. They need to tell us what is being said. And in the dialogue, what we want to hear is the character is talking. We don't want to hear you talking. So that is not the place to put your favorite ornaments. There is a time and a place for those, and it's not the dialogue tags. So my recommendation is to stay away from them as much as possible, and uh, hopefully your, your dialogue will sail through and ring in the reader's mind as a conversation that feels realistic without anybody standing there telling them what is being said and how it's being said. And um, that just about does it for my, my opinion piece on dialogue tags today. So uh, thanks for watching and let me know if you have questions about this or some other kind of writing technique question that you'd like to ask me. Thanks.